Okay, let's talk to Jessica, everybody. Growing up, I always had problems with my hair. I always had problems because of the texture, it was hard, and I had the problem of growing my hair out and it falling out on repeat until sophomore year when I started doing my own hair. Of course, there was trial, trial and error, and I had to learn over time how to efficiently do my hair without damaging it. Throughout my years, I would use perms and things that destroyed my hair in order to make my hair look nice for a photo, and I would have to consult my body and my hair into general norms in order to make my hair look beautiful and look like the common pretty person. Well, my senior year, I developed a way to do my hair more efficiently and have it looking nice while keeping it protected. There are multiple protective styles in the world for black women and other women. And with protective styles, you have a really broad ability to grow your hair up. Back in 3400 BC, Egyptians used wigs to cover their heads and they shaved their heads to protect them from the skin. And when um, I use wigs, I also use the same things to help grow out my hair. So I'm going to teach you in three easy steps how to apply a wig and teach you about different types of wigs as well. So first, you need a wig, of course. There are different types of wigs, so I brought two different types of wigs in today. Today I have with me a lace front. We're going to do this. Okay. As you can see, on the front of the lace, it looks like it's a scalp. also see that there are clips at the top of the head to attach to your hair and it is also a clip at the bottom and an adjuster for your head to make sure that it is on safe and tight. Today I also have with me a regular wig. This you can just get off of Amazon or at any store and it's just a pretty normal wig. So the difference between that is it has no lace so it can't look like real scalp. And it's just on there for party purposes, costume purposes, and there you go. And the difference is that you can tell by right here, I'm going to show you guys the lace. You can see that the part in the scalp that it does not look natural. So today, I am going to show you how to apply both of these wigs onto your head efficiently and safely. Okay. So starting with this one, I am going to do the lace front. I currently already braided my hair, so I didn't have to do a whole braiding process and explain that. But if you have up to eight braids, or if your hair is thin like Kayla's, not trying to point you out. If your hair is like Kayla's hair pattern, you can do the easy two braids. If your hair is like Caesar's, same. And if your hair is like mine, you could do up to eight. But today I did two just because it's faster. So, whew, I hate masks. Um, with this wig, as you can see, it's very much shangled, but when you get it in the package, it'll be freshly combed and freshly neat. But this is a used old wig that I have, that I grabbed. So it is not as fresh as me. So first you're gonna have your base. This is your base. I'm gonna show you guys my braids real quick. So this is my hair, and that's the start off with your base. Normally, with the lace front, you would use a wig cap, and you would trim that to your head, but unfortunately, it takes a lot of time to do that, and I do not have that time. So I'm gonna show you how to do it without a wig cap. So currently, this is already cut to my size. So when cutting the lace, you would have a lace that goes down to here, and you have to, I personally draw a line for a scalp above my hairline so it can evenly match up. So this will have easy access to just, I put it on the closest clip 
right here. And I get the back hook and I attach it to the back of my hook. And then I bring the bottom of it around. And then I clip it to the sides and try to find that middle. And voila, this is on my head. So as you can see, it looks somewhat natural and like a real scalp. Currently, I don't have the tools to make it look more natural or the time. However, it's just a throw on right now and you can see the difference. And you can see how in the middle, it looks like a real scalp. So the difference between this one and this one, as I told you earlier, is the scalp difference. So to also take it off, you can unhook the front, unhook the back, and it's easy to take off, unless you glue it down. Then you have to get rubbing alcohol and rub it off, or mineral water or oil. So next we have this red one. So this one has no clips, and this one has just an easy band. So you just pull it on, and it's easy to go. I'm gonna brush this one out so you guys can see it better. And with this wig, you can just do it for a grab and go, a party, and I'm gonna show you styling ways to use it. So I don't know how it looks right now on me because I currently do not have a mirror, but a mirror is encouraged. <laughs> so I would either have a hat on to make it look like, oh, this is real to cover my scalp, so this would be one way or i would use like a visor or a beanie to efficiently ensure that my wig looks natural and like i'm faking it to look great for events so in conclusion i showed you the base how to put on the wig the difference between wigs and how to style it so ooh. so wigs are an important part of my community and they're also a part, part of the Egyptian community. And they have developed multiple ways over time. And I was glad to share it with you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jessica Caesar. Why don't you start us off? Um, well, during the competition, uh, throughout your entire speech, uh, your tone was uh, pretty good. Uh, the volume was. Uh, well, I mean, really good. I feel like everyone uh, could hear you really well. Uh, one thing I do say is um, sometimes, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it exactly, but uh, I feel like I, how do you say it? Uh, I'm losing words, oh, sorry. Uh, it's like, uh, almost felt a bit nervous. Oh, it's because of the mask, I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. I have mask yeah, yeah, I understand okay. it. It's just, um, it doesn't take much away from the speech, it's just something that I noticed. Um, but other than that, I think it was uh, very well put together. Um, there was a good introduction. The speech was organized, different parts, and then finally you completed it all off. You state, you restated what you were said, and I think it was very well organized. Great, thank you, and Jackie. Oh, um, for starters, uh, I really enjoyed the presentation. As someone who bought a wig before, I didn't know how to put it on correctly, but. Um, Tone, amazing, eye, can't, eye, eye contact, perfect, you, I feel like you went along and like had eye contact with each and everyone individually, then showing all of us um, your wig, how it looked on you, uh, and like so we could visibly see the difference between like what a lace front is and what a non-lace front is, that was very well, um, very good, I like that. Uh, another thing that I did notice that I feel like also kind of was what like kind of like the downfall, or not downfall, downfall is not a good word, but like, I feel like with you, like coming over here, like walking around all of us, that's when, when you went back, that's when you started to like, breathe a little heavier, and I feel like all the moving around kind of just helped, like, was also there, like affected the deliverance of your speech. That's all. And Vanessa? Uh, I really liked the pretty much was just gonna agree with that and say that your tone was great, I believe that you gave good eye contact with everybody and that you did 
you know, you walked around the room and you made sure that we were all engaged with and whatnot. I thought that was really great. The only critique that I would give you was just that, you know, uh, you don't need to say out loud whatever that you're feeling inside because if you just literally just keep going with it, it's a guarantee nobody else is gonna notice or better yet, they're not even gonna make a comment about it. So that would be my only thing. Yes, that's a, that's a great note. You, everybody, we never apologize. We never, ever, ever, ever apologize because chances are the audience because we're egocentric, nobody really cares about anybody else but themselves. We're never going to notice a mistake unless you call attention to the mistake. And when you, you apologize, that's what happens. But I thought the topic was really interesting. I'm glad you chose something that you are familiar with that's important to you. I think your volume is excellent. Like right from the get-go, you were in command of the room. And that's what everybody, I want everybody to be in command of the room. Your, your tone of voice I thought was excellent. I mean, I immediately wanted to listen to you once you started talking. I immediately liked you because you just had a lot of energy and enthusiasm. So that was fantastic. And it was very easy to understand you. I think the intro was, was, a, was a little long. I, I didn't hear the source citation. I liked the historical reference. But I'm a big fan. Well, I said Maven Hair, May 22nd, 2020. Oh, so I, I missed that. I, I didn't hear that. And, that. and that's just, I think, the, the mass happening. But uh, also, your intro was three minutes. I want it two. I want you to lock that thing down. I want people to be more efficient in what they do when they are in front of a room. And you were a little jittery. I, I understand there's nothing that, uh, that can be done about that sometimes with the mask on. We, we do not ever use the phrase in conclusion in Ed's presence. It gives him a migraine. In conclusion, everybody, what's a cliche? Something that's overused. Something that's overused. So starting your speech with a question and ending your speech with in conclusion are cliches. I want you to banish them from your repertoire. Great job. Thank you, Jessica. All right, Jackie, go get set up.